Hey guys, welcome to the third video of this video series. In this video, we show you the conventional sign symbols, the color referencing, distance and area calculation. Now these are very important topics, so watch the full video and try to understand everything. If you have any doubts or any problems, then please comment down below. And so without further ado, let's start. Conventional signs and symbols. Now in a topographical map, you see many things. Now to understand all these things, you first need to understand conventional signs and symbols. Now in the previous videos, I taught you all the things which are basic and which could be understood without these. Now the things which I will teach after these are very important and these require a proper understanding of the signs and symbols. So let's start. We start with settlements first. Now settlements simply means towns or cities. Now how are these formed? These are formed by the combination of huts. Now we have two types of huts as you can see in your video. We have permanent huts fully marked in red and temporary hut, red box. So permanent hut means pakka house and this one a red box temporary hut means kacha house. Okay. Now we move on to buildings. Now first we have mandir. A temple you know what that means second we have mosque you know you also know what that means third we have post office a place where you can send your letters and receive your letters now we have to that means telegraph office now the line which you see are telegraph lines ps means police station place where you can find police number seven is dark bungalow now what is dark bungalow dark bungalow is basically a guest house or more properly a traveler's house where travelers usually stay and number eight we have circuit house now what does circuit house means it is a large building to accommodate officers on duty so basically any officer of that region stays in a circuit house we move on to roads now number one we have a metal road now a metal road is a pakka road which is motorable in all the seasons now the presence of metal road shows that the area is well developed now you see a seven on that metal road now that is a milestone. Number two, we have unmetalled road or kacha roads. This means that the village or the place where it is present is undeveloped and such roads are basically used for traveling. Now we have pack track or pagdandi, which is represented by a broken line. Now this is a path made by constant use by men or animals to travel. Okay. Now we have number four, a cart track. Now cart track is little broader than a pack track which is used by bullock carts. Now cart track is motorable in the dry season. Now this is important. Cart track is motorable in dry season. Then we have red dots which represent a footpath. Now you all know what the footpath is. Then number six we have a bridge. That is a basic symbol of for a bridge. Now number seven we have a causeway. That is a symbol of a causeway with causeway written over it. Now what does this mean? This means a raised road or platform across a minor stream. Now we have water bodies and irrigation symbols. Now first of all we have tanks. Now what is a tank? Tank is a source of irrigation. It is a major source of irrigation in places like Rajasthan and Gujarat. So first we have a perennial tank that means water is present throughout the year. Second we have a seasonal tank which is represented by a blue line and blue dots. This means water is present during rainy season. Third, we have a dry tank which is represented by a black line and black dots. This means water may be present in the wet season or the rainy season. Fourth, we have tank with an embankment. Now what is an embankment? An embankment is built to keep the water flowing out or flooding. So basically tanks which have embankment means tanks which are built by humans and tanks without embankments means tanks which are natural. Now fifth we have perennial lined well. It is a bore in the ground. It is a pakka well lined with bricks and cement and in which water is present throughout the year. Then we have unlined well with 20 R written. Well what is an unlined well? It is a kacha well and it means the blue line means that water is present in that well and the 20 R means the relative depth of this particular well is 20 meter. So remember that 20 R means the relative depth of this well is 20 meters. Then we have number seven. It is a lined well with brackish water. Now what is brackish water? 
the water is saline and it is unfit for drinking now we come to drainage number one we have a stream or a nadi you can see a blue line now this shows a normal channel of water number two we have a dry river now rivers are wider than streams now in number two you can see this is made in black with dots in it so this basically means a dry river now number three we have a perennial river a river which is marked fully in blue and which means water is present throughout the year in that river that is a perennial river number three number four we have a river which is dry but with a water channel in between that means water channel will flow throughout the year but basically it is a dry river then we have number five stream undefined now these types of streams are undefined on the map number six we have a dry stream black line simple black lines dry or seasonal stream water may be present during the rainy seasons in these type of streams number seven we have disappearing streams now this occurs specially in porous or sandy regions the water in the stream is absorbed before it meets in any main river okay so that is disappearing stream now number eight we have broken grounds now what are broken grounds these are generally found along the banks of a stream or river in arid regions where the top soils gets easily eroded due to flooding during rainy season now these types of lands are not cultivable means crops cannot be grown on these types of lands now we have vegetation number 1 open scrub now what does that mean that means the area indicates a desert or a semi desert condition that is easy number 2 we have a dense forest now what does dense forest means or dense jungle it simply means that the area is covered with uh, trees then we have open mixed jungle that is open forest it simply means it is an open forest uh, the area in which it is present has a moderate amount of rainfall then we have number 4 survey tree now these trees are prominent survey points and these are shown in black color number 5 we have a fire line now fire line is important because this comes in examinations now what is a fire line a fire line is a clearing made in forest to prevent the spread of a forest fire now if you have forest fire you need clearings like this so that it does not spread across the whole forest okay now we also have two miscellaneous symbols brick kiln and lime kiln now number 1 what is brick kiln it is a place where bricks are baked now this basically shows employment and number 2 we have lime kiln this shows a place where limestone is mined this is also a type of employment place now there are many sign symbols and conventions present in a topographical survey the ones which i just showed you are basically all the signs or conventions which you will be needing now these are very important to have a proper understanding of topographical survey now if you have a good grasp of all this you can definitely score good marks in your examination now let's understand the color tints which are used in a topographical map now when you see a topographical map which you are provided for your examination you basically see yellow and green so we have yellow we have green and we also have a little bit of white patches now yellow means cultivable land very simple you can do agriculture on that land green means forest area okay and white means rocky area or barren land so which is hence uncultivable so these are your three color tints and as you know from previous videos the brown lines which are present that are contour lines now i'll also explain to you one other thing in this one now in your map you can basically see something like these these lines now these are not lines these are dotted brown points okay so what are these these are basically sign dunes now as we have the topo sheet of rajasthan and gujarat you basically know that that area of india is desert area so these are sand dunes these are nothing but sand dunes now you can see another thing this is a sand dune and we have 15 r written over here now what is this well i am sorry i didn't explain this to you in the previous video this is relative height of a sand dune 15 r so if you are asked this you will simply write the relative height of this sand dune this particular sand dune is 15 meters now similarly we have something over here 9 r so relative height of this particular sand dune is 9 meters so this is basically relative height and the sand dunes now this was your total of the color tints now it is easy to understand hope you understand it 
Okay guys, let's measure some distances in your map. Well, measuring distances is a very important part of your topographical survey because you know to connect two places you need their distances. Now you cannot just travel anywhere without knowing the distance. So let's start with straight lines first. Now let's measure straight line distances from settlement Bhakar, Dhantiwada and Vagral. Now in your question paper it will be stated simply calculate the distance between Bhakar and Dhantiwada as the crow flies. Now you are gonna need a scale and a pencil for this I guess. Now let's measure the straight distance from Bhakar to Dhantiwada. Now take a scale. Now as this is a big settlement you need to take the end points. Okay. Basically this is the end point. Any end point over here it does not matter. And the end point over here. Okay. So this is 14 centimeter. Yes you can see it perfectly. Now you can make a line if you want. There is no problem. I will make a line. So we have 14 centimeters. Now how you will write that in your answer sheet. Now we calculated the distance between the two settlements on the map. It came out 14 centimeters. So we write that first. Okay, now we know the RF. Now to understand RF, you can watch our previous videos on topographical survey. RF is 1 is to 50,000. Now what this actually means, this means that 2 centimeters on the map equals 1 kilometer on the actual ground. Okay, so write that 2 centimeters on the map equal to 1 kilometer on the actual ground. So 1 centimeter will equal 1 by 2 kilometer and 14 centimeters will equal 1 by 2 into 14 kilometers which is equal to 7 kilometers. So this is your answer. The straight line distance between the two settlements is 7 kilometers. So this is how you calculate the straight line distance. Now I'll show you an example on the topographical map. Now let's measure the straight line distance from Vakar to Vagral. This is Bhakar and this is Vagral. So as I explained to you it's quite simple. Just use a scale from the end points. Okay. I don't know if you can see or not. It's coming 10 centimeters. Yeah that's 10. So the distance on the map, topographical map is 10 centimeters. Remember that and now I will solve it for you. Now we had the straight line distance on the map, 10 centimeters. So I will simply write straight line distance, elaborate that yourself equals 10 centimeters. Now we write the RF. What is the RF? RF is 1 is to 50,000. What does this mean? This means 2 centimeters on the map equals 1 kilometer on the ground. 1 centimeter on the map equals half kilometer on the ground. Therefore 10 centimeters equals half into 10 kilometers which is equal to 5 kilometers. So this is your answer. The straight line distance is 5 kilometers. Okay, let's learn now how to calculate the curve distance, okay? So in curve distance, you can simply be asked to calculate the distance between two settlements by a cart track or any such road. You can also be asked a distance of a river or a canal. But basically distance between two settlements are generally asked. So let's learn how to do it. Now you will be provided with a twig, something like this a white twig in your examinations. Now what you will do, you will put this one end over here and start measuring it as the road goes. Something like this. Okay. 
keep doing it now there is no need to be precise because no one can be 100% precise but measure it properly okay now this is okay so this is your end now take a pen and mark a point over here okay the point is marked now what you will do you will straighten this up and with a scale you will measure its distance so 0 and this is around 13.4 okay so this is 13.4 centimeters now start writing now simply write the distance on map equals 13.4 centimeter what is your RF RF is 1 is to 50,000 which means 2 centimeter on the map equals 1 kilometer on the actual ground 1 centimeter on the map equals half kilometer on the actual ground and 13.4 centimeter on the map will equal half into 13.4 kilometers and that will be equal to 6.7 kilometers so this is your answer the distance between settlement Atal and Jagor is 6.7 kilometers through the cart track. Now for an actual example, I will find out the distance between Atal and Jagor on a topographical map. So take a thread over here and start. This is almost straight. straight over here okay so this is the end i'll take a pen i'll mark this okay now let's find the distance using a scale so we now find the distance on the scale so zero centimeters and it is coming around seven centimeters okay it is fully seven centimeters so that's good so now we calculate the distance so the distance on the map simply write that that equaled 7 centimeters now you know the RF now always write RF when you are doing questions like this it will be good now what does this mean this means uh, 2 centimeters on the map will equal 1 kilometer on the actual ground 1 centimeter will equal half kilometer therefore 7 centimeters will equal 1 by 2 into 7 kilometers that will equal 3.5 kilometers so the distance between the two settlements along the cart track is 3.5 kilometers so this is how you will calculate curve distance now you should solve some questions like this so that you get a good grasp of this thing you will definitely get one question from this in your ICSC examinations now we will learn how to calculate area on a topographical map so basically I don't think these questions are going to come in your examination but still let's learn how to do it now you remember let's recap to the first video first if you remember I told you that each square is of 2 cm as you can see 2 cm over here and 2 cm over here now what is the area of a square it's side square so that's basically 4 cm square so area of a particular square is 4 cm square now in kilometers let's calculate this in kilometers okay now each side is 2 centimeters therefore each side in kilometers equals 1 kilometer because 2 centimeter on the map equals 1 kilometer on the actual ground RF and area as you know is side square it is 1 kilometer square so this is basically your area on the actual ground now you can simply be asked to find the area of a particular grid or eastings northings so you can do that easily because you know the area of one square is one kilometer square therefore as many squares that many area of the particular place so we get the basic idea that the area four centimeter square on the map will equal area one kilometer square on the actual ground now let's solve an example so you get the basic understanding of this now in the example we have to calculate the area of the ground from eastings 84 to 86 and northings 70 to 74. Now we have to calculate the area from this 84 to 86 
and 70 to 74 so we have this eight boxes now there are two ways to do this first of all you know the area of each box is one kilometer square we have eight boxes so the area is eight kilometer square now you cannot do this in your examination so let me show you how to do it now we have eastings 84 to 86 and northings 70 to 74 let's start with the eastings first now what we do we simply subtract the eastings 86 minus 84 equals two boxes now in the earlier videos I told you that one box equals two centimeter so basically two boxes equals four centimeter simple unitary method we have RF 1 is to 50,000 that means two centimeters equals one kilometer therefore four centimeters will equal two kilometers so we have two kilometers distance of the eastings now we have northing 70 to 74 we simply subtract it similar to eastings 74 minus 70 which gives us four boxes now four boxes will equal eight centimeters because one box equals two centimeter now according to rf two centimeters equals one kilometer therefore eight centimeters will simply equal four kilometers so the distance of northings is 4 kilometers. Now basically what is area? You know what is area? Length into breadth. That's 4 into 2 kilometer square. That's 8 kilometer square. Now this is how you will write this on your answer sheet. So guys here we come to an end of this video. If you have any problems or doubts, please comment down below. I will be more than happy to clarify it for you. Now next video of this series will be coming out soon. So stay tuned. Until next time, this is Eduception signing off.